In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful to-do list app from scratch and get it running and working on five different platforms. iOS app that you see here, Android app, a Mac app, a Windows app, and we're going to get this running in a web browser as well in 30 goddamn minutes. If you're new here, my name's Danny. I'm an indie app developer and creator of Fudget. If you want to learn how to create cross-platform apps for the web, iOS, Android, Mac and Windows from a single code base, click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's have a look at this app we're going to build. So it has this striking, stylish, tall header, this beautiful background image of mountains and clouds. It has the name of our app and today's date. So if we view this app tomorrow, then this will show tomorrow's date. And we can add tasks. We're going to add poo bananas. And we can click a task to mark it as complete. And once it's complete, we see this delete icon. You can click on that. We get this confirmation box asking if we really want to delete it. And then if we click OK, then the task is deleted. We see this nice little notification. If we click on this menu button, see this beautiful drawer with a header image at the top, a user avatar and some details and links to our two pages. We also have this basic help page. And if we click back to our to-do page, you can see the state of our app is maintained. And when there are no tasks, we see this nice no tasks icon as well. So you might be thinking, Danny, you're talking out your butt, mate. How can it be possible to create this app on five different platforms in 30 minutes? Well, it's made possible by Quasar Framework, which is an incredible new framework which allows you to create a Vue.js app with a single code base and deploy it to multiple different platforms. So you can deploy it to the web as a single page application, a progressive web app, or a server side rendered app. You can deploy it to a mobile app using Cordova, both iOS and Android. And you can deploy it to a desktop app using Electron for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Not only that, but it also has over a hundred different material components, such as buttons in all kinds of different styles. Uh, lists and list items, again, loads of different styles and form components, all the different form components you're likely to need. It's got almost anything you'll need for most apps and you can just click on this button for any component, grab the code and just paste it into your app and start using it. It also has a ton of different utilities and plugins such as inbuilt date formatting, the ability to store and retrieve data with local storage, it has hot reloading on all devices which means when you save your work you see the change instantly and this works not only in the browser but also on mobile and desktop apps as well and it also has platform detection built in. Which means that you can for example show a particular element only on desktop and then show a different element only on mobile. Or you can fire a particular block of code only on mobile and then fire a different block of JavaScript code only on desktop. So Quasar really is the best cross-platform solution out there at the moment. Okay, let's get started by creating a new Quasar project. So we want to go to quasar.dev. We want to click on install. And it tells you how to install it up here. We need to have Node installed. If you don't have that, you can just go to nodejs.org and download one of these. Probably the one on the left is safer. And once that's installed, then you want to install Quasar with this command, npm install-g at quasar slash cli. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run that. Once that's installed, we can then create a Quasar project with the Quasar create command. So I'm going to jump over to my terminal make sure I'm in my projects folder and run quasar create and then the name of our project. I'm going to call it quasar dash to do. And it's going to ask us for some settings now. So I'm going to leave the project name. I'm going to change the product name to quasar to do. I'm going to leave the description, leave the author. I'm going to use SAS with SCSS syntax for the CSS. And I'm going to use auto import for the Quasar components and directives. This means that whenever we use a Quasar component or directive in our app, Quasar will automatically detect that and add it to our project for us. Pretty goddamn clever. Uh, I'm going to disable all of these options because this app is going to be pretty basic. For the Cordova ID, I'm going to just add com.dannyconnell.quasar to do. Uh, I'm going to use npm. 
Okay, that's installed. If we scroll up a little bit, it tells us how to get started. Just need to CD into the folder, then run Quasar Dev. So CD Quasar to do and Quasar Dev. Okay, that's running in the browser. So to begin with, you just get a very basic Quasar app with a toolbar along the top and a draw along the side. And the draw can be toggled with this button here. And on mobile, we'll see the draw disappear. And again, it can be toggled with this button. So I'm just going to drag the folder it's created into my editor, which is here, Quasar to do. Drag that in there. Now, in most of my videos, I take my time and explain everything I'm doing step by step. But in this case, I'm just going to smash through this as quickly as I can. And the first thing I'm going to do is change our primary color, which currently is this blue color. So I'm going to jump to source, CSS, and quasar.variables.scss. We have all our color theme variables in here. So I'm going to change the primary color to this nice blue color. And we can see that color change straight away in the browser. And now I'm going to jump to our layout file, which is in layouts, mylayout.view. I'm going to remove this title and this subtitle. And I'm going to remove this elevated prop on the Q header, which is creating this drop shadow here. Save that. And I'm going to add a div after our Q toolbar, where we'll display the title and today's date. So I'm going to stick another div with a class of text H3. I'm just going to put to do in there. Then I'm going to add a div with a class of text subtitle 1. And just put today's date in there, which is Monday, the 4th of November. And this could do with a bit of padding around it. So I'm going to add some padding classes, which are built into Quasar to this div. So I'm going to add a class of Q-PX-LG to add some large padding on the X axis. Then I'm going to add Q-PTXL padding top extra large to create this nice gap between the menu button and the title. And then I'm going to add Q-MB-MD for a medium bottom margin. And you can find all these classes on the Quasar site. Okay, so I want a nice background image for this header. So I'm going to jump to a site called pixabay.com. I'm going to search for mountains. And this is the image I want. So I'm going to click on that. Click download. I'm going to drag this into my project folder. into the source folder and then statics. And I'm going to rename that file to just mountains.jpg. Jump back to our editor. And I'm going to add a Q image component here. I'm going to set the source to static slash mountains.jpg. And I'm going to give this some classes. So I'm going to give it a class of header image so we can target this for styles. And a class of absolute top to position it at the top, absolutely. And then I'm going to add some styles for this. So I'm going to jump down to the bottom and add a style section. I want the length to be SCSS. And we're going to target the header image. And I'm going to give this a height of 100% so that it doesn't pop outside of the header. Get a Z index of minus one to stick it behind our other elements. An opacity of 0.2 to make it semi-transparent. Then I'm going to add a filter property, set that to grayscale 100% to make this image black and white so that we can see our primary color popping through it nicely. Okay, and we want this date to display dynamically. So I'm going to jump to the Quasar site. I'm just going to search for date, jump to date utils. Then I'm going to jump up to format for display. And it shows us here how we can get today's date and then format it using Quasar's inbuilt date formatting. So we want to stick this first line, this import date, at the top of our script section. So I'll stick that there. And these are the two lines. I'm going to stick those within a computed property. So I'm going to add computed object to our export here. And I'll add a computed property called today's date. And I'll paste in those lines. Fix the indentation. And instead of putting this formatted date in a variable, I'm just going to return that. So I'll get rid of that bit and just put return. And then I'm going to replace our hard coded date here with that computed property. So I'll double curly braces, today's date, save that. Okay, that looks a bit bobbins. So we want to 
jump back to the Quasar site and we can see all the date tokens here. So we can use these to format this date nicely. So I'm gonna jump back down to that computed property and change this string here, which is telling Quasar how to format the date. So I want day of the week, which we can get with DDDD. -D -D -D. And then day of the month, which we can get with a capital D. And the full month name, which we can get with capital M times four. So M, 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 M. See how that's looking now. Okay, we can now see today's date in there. Okay, now I'm going to replace this but ugly draw with a nice one. I'm going to jump to the Quasar site, go to layout and grid, and then layout draw. Scroll down. And I want one like this with this nice header image. So I'm going to click on view source, and I'm going to copy the code for the draw. Jump back to our code and replace the existing draw completely. And this V model here determines whether this draw is open or closed. And if you look down in our data, it's currently set to left drawer open. So I'm going to change that to left drawer open so that, that works properly. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to replace the avatar and change these details. So the avatar is here. I'm going to change the source to my gravatar link. And I'll update the name and the Twitter handle. Now I'm going to replace this background image which is here with our mountains image. So static slash mountains dot JPEG. And I want this to be a little bit wider. So I'm going to jump back up to the opening Q draw tag and set this width to 250. And this breakpoint prop, this determines at which point the mobile mode kicks in as we scale it down. And it's a little bit too low at the moment. So I'm going to set that up to 600. And we should see the mobile version kick in there. Okay, great. Now I want this header image to be the same height as this header. So I'm just going to see how tall that is. I'm going to inspect that. Try and find the header. So it's 192 pixels high. So I'm going to scroll down to this header image. And it's currently set to a height of 150. I'm going to change that to 192. And if we look at the Q draw. This Q scroll area is also using this 150 to offset it from the header image. So I'm going to update these 150s to 192 as well. Now I'm going to work on this nav menu. So I'm going to just delete all of the items except the first one. And the first Q item is here. So I'm going to delete all the rest. Now I'm going to change this label that says inbox to to do. So this is going to be a link to our to do page. And I'm going to change the icon to list. Let's give it this little list icon. Then I'm going to duplicate this Q item to create a link for our help page. I'm going to change the label to help and also change the icon to help. Okay, now I'm going to set up some pages and routes, but before we do that, I want to make sure our pages keep alive. So if you look down here at the bottom of the Q layout component, you can see this root of view here. That's where our pages will be displayed. And we can make these keep alive by surrounding that in keep alive tags. Like this. This means that if we make changes on the to do page, then go to the help page, then go back again, all our changes will be preserved. Okay, so now I'm going to jump to our default page, which has this image on it. And that's in source, pages, and it's index.view. And I'm going to rename this to to do and this will break our app because if we look in our roots file which is in this router folder then roots.js we have our roots here and this default root is currently pointing to index.view so we need to change that to to do.view save that and now i'm going to open that to do page in the pages folder i'm going to get rid of this name property and uh, i'm going to get rid of this quasar image uh, i'm just going to stick a h5 on the page which just says to do save that we now see that heading on the page i'm also going to remove these classes on the q page element to stop everything being placed in the center now i'm going to duplicate this to do page and rename that to help.view open that up and just change this heading to help save that then i'm going to jump to the roots file in the router folder set up a root for this page so i'm going to duplicate this existing root to the to do page set the file to help.view 
and we'll set the path to slash help. Save that. So if I go to slash help, then we're on the help page. If we just go to slash, then we're back on the to do page. So now I'm going to hook these pages up to this nav bar. So I'm going to jump back to the my layout.view file in the layout folder, jump up to our queue items, which are here. So here's the to do queue item. I'm going to break up the attributes here. Uh, I'm going to add an attribute called two and just set that to slash. So that will make this item link to the path slash. Then I'll do the same on the help item. But we'll set this path to slash help. Save that. Let's see if these links are working. Yeah, these seem to be working. We have some issues with active classes here. If we're on the help page, we can see the to do page is still marked as active. And we can fix that by adding a exact prop to both of these Q items. Save that. Uh, we can see those styling issues are now fixed. Okay, I'm just going to quickly set up this help page. So I'm going to open pages, help.view. Uh, we're going to add some padding to the page, one of Quasar's built in padding classes. So I'm going to add Q PA for padding all dash large for a large padding all around. And then I'm going to remove the top margin from this heading with Q MT for margin top dash none. And then we're just going to stick a couple of paragraphs in here with some lorem ipsum. Save that. Okay, let's create a list of tasks for our to-do page. So I'm gonna to jump to source, pages, and to-do.view. And I want this page to have a gray background. So on the Q page component, we're at a class of bg-gray-3. And I'm also gonna add a class of column so that all the elements on this page are stacked. And I want a list of tasks with checkboxes. So I'm gonna to jump to the Quasar site, go to view components, form components, and checkbox. And I'm going to jump down to with Q item. You can see this nice list here of items with checkboxes. So I'm going to click on view source and grab all of this Q list. And just paste it over this H5 here. Save that. And we can see those items on the page. I'm just going to remove this comment and remove all of the Q items except the first one. And I'm going to remove this tag equals label prop because I found with this on there clicks aren't handled properly on mobile so I'm going to get rid of that and I want our list to be white so I'm going to add a class of bg white to the Q list component and I'm going to split the attributes on this checkbox and get rid of this val prop because we don't need that we will set the color to primary and we'll set the v model on these later this basically determines whether the checkbox is checked or not. And because this color property doesn't exist, it just has this indeterminate state at the moment. Okay, now I'm gonna add a data property for our tasks. So I'm gonna set up a data function that returns an object, create an array called tasks. And each item will be an object with a title property and a done property, which will be set to false to begin with. So, I'm going to duplicate this twice so we have three items. And I'll just stick some titles in here. So get bananas, eat bananas, and poo bananas. Okay, we want these to display one by one on the page using this Q item. So I'm going to jump to that Q item and add a V4 loop. And we want to loop through our tasks. So we're going to do V4 task in tasks save that uh, we now see three items on the page and we have an error here because we need to add a key property whenever we use the v4 and for now i'm just going to set the key to task.title now normally you'd want this key to be something unique like a unique id but in the interest of speed i'm just going to set it to the title okay we want to display the title of each task in these labels here so i'm going to remove this teal text Replace that with double curly braces and then task.title. Save that. You can now see the titles of our tasks. And I'm just going to style this list up a bit. So I'm going to jump to the queue list component. I'm going to add a separator prop and a bordered prop. 
So we'll stick a border around our list and stick separators between each item. And now I'm going to bind this checkbox to our done properties within our tasks array. So on this Q checkbox, I'm going to set the V model to task.done. Save that. And we can see they're all unchecked at the moment because all of our tasks are set to done false down here. But if we set this middle one to true, then we can see this middle one is checked. If you found this video useful so far, make sure you smash the like button and leave a comment telling me what you think about Quasar. Okay, so I wanna be able to mark these items as done or not done when we click them. So I'm gonna add a click handler to the Q item, which sets the done property to the opposite of itself. So I'm gonna to jump to the Q item, I'm gonna add a click handler. So at click, where I'm just gonna set task.done equal to the opposite of task.done. So if it's true, set it to false. If it's false, set it to true. And this Q checkbox component has its own click stuff going on. And I want that to be ignored. So I'm gonna add a class of no pointer events to that so that any clicks on that checkbox will be ignored. Okay, so let's see if that's working. Oh, that's not working because we need to add a clickable prop to this Q item. So I'll add that, clickable, save that. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's working now. Now I want to style these tasks differently when they're done. So I'm going to conditionally add a class to these when they're done. So on this Q item, I'm going to bind to the class attribute and conditionally add a class of done whenever task.done is true. Save that. And if we just inspect that, this one that's done, you can see this one has a class of done and the other two don't. So I'm going to jump down to the style section and add some styles for that. Set the lang to scss. And we're going to target the done class. And within that, I want to target this label. So I'll just see what the class is for that. So the class is q-item double underscore label. So I'm going to copy that, paste that within this selector with a dot at the start. And when a task is done, I want it to have a line through it. So I'm going to add text decoration. Set that to line through. And I'm also going to set the color to a gray color. So color, I'm going to use BBB. Save that. And we can see our done tasks now have these styles. And I'd also like our done tasks to have a different background color. So I'm going to jump up to the Q item and where we're binding to the class attribute here when a task is done. I'm also going to spit out the class BG-blue-1 to give it a nice blue color. There we go. Okay, so when a task is marked as done, I want to display a little delete button here that we can click to delete the task. So these Q item components are made up of these Q item sections. So I'm going to create another one of these. I'm just going to stick X in there for now. And I only want to show this if the task is done. So I'm going to add V dash if task.done. And I'm also going to add a prop of side to make sure it's over on the side. So we can see that little X, but I'd like a nice button. So I'm gonna to jump to the Quasar site, go to view components, buttons, button. And I would like a flat round icon like this. So I'm gonna click view source, grab the code for that. Uh, paste it over this little X, save that. Okay, we can now see this little gift card icon. And I'm gonna split up these attributes on the button. And I'm gonna add a prop of dense to make this a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna change the icon to delete. So we get this little bin icon. And in order to delete the correct task from our tasks array, we're gonna need the index of that task that's been clicked. So we can get that really easily. So on our v4 loop, I'm just gonna surround task in parentheses and then just add comma index. And now I'm gonna add a click handler to this delete button, which is here. So at click, and I'm also going to add a modifier of dot stop to this because we already have a click handler on this Q item. And we don't want that click handler to be triggered when we click this delete button. So adding this modifier will stop that from happening. So click dot stop equals, and we'll trigger a method called delete task. And we'll pass in that index. Save that. And now I'll create this delete task method. So after our data function, we're going to add methods and add this delete task method, pass in that index. And to delete the task, we can just do this.tasks.splice. 
parentheses and then index comma one. So this is just going to delete the task in the tasks array at the position of index. And it's only going to delete one item. So let's see if that's working. Click on the delete button and the task is deleted. It'd be good if we had a confirmation dialog before it's actually deleted. So I'm going to jump back to the Quasar site. This time I'm going to go to plugins and then dialog. And I would like a confirm dialog like this. So I'm going to click view source, click on script, uh, grab the code for that confirm dialog. And I'm going to paste it inside this delete task method. And I'm going to get rid of all of these callbacks except this first on OK callback. And this on OK callback will be fired when the user clicks on OK in the dialog. So I'm going to move this line where we delete the task into that callback. And I'm just going to change the message to really delete. Save that. Let's see if that's working. Click on the button. No, it's not working because we need to install this dialog plugin. And we do that in our config file, which is in the root of our project. And it's this quasar.conf.js file. So here's the plugins array. So I'm just going to add dialog to that. Save that. See if that's working. Click the button. Yeah, we see this confirm pop up. Click OK. And the item is deleted. I'm also going to add a little notification that pops up at the bottom when we do delete a task. And we can do that with the notify plugin. So under plugins, that's just here. And they look kind of like this. So we again need to install this. So I'll add it to our plugins array here in the config file. And then we could trigger it like this. So I'm going to copy that line, jump back to our to do page. And We'll trigger that after we delete the task. So I'll paste that in there and I'll just change the message to task deleted. Save that. Okay, click the delete button, click OK, and we see this nice little notification at the bottom. I'm going to add the ability to add a task now. So I'm going to stick an input at the top here under the header with a button that the user can click to add a task. So I'm going to jump to the top and above our queue list, we're going to add a div with a class of row and a class of q pa sm to add some small padding and a class of bg-primary to give it our primary background color. Uh, I'm just going to stick the text add task in there for now. Okay, we can see that on the page. Now we're going to need an input, preferably with a button that we can click. So I'm going to jump to the Quasar site, go to View Components, Form Components, and Input Text Field. I'm going to jump down to Filled. And if we scroll down, there's a nice input here with a little Add button there. So that's perfect. So that's the fourth one from the top. So I'm going to click on View source and uh, one, two, three, four. Grab this code and paste it into this row that we've created. Save that. Okay, so we need to make this look a bit better than that. So I'm going to get rid of these slots that we have here. This before slot, which is adding this icon, and this field hint slot, which we don't need. Delete that, and I'll split up the attributes on this Q input. And I'm going to get rid of this bottom slots prop. Get rid of the counter, which is adding this character counter thing. Get rid of the max length. I'm going to set this dense prop to just dense to make this a little bit smaller. And I want this input to have a white background color. So I'm going to add BG color, set that to white. And we want this to stretch all the way across. So I'm going to add a class of col to make this a column. And columns will stretch all the way across by default. I'm going to add a prop of square to square up the edges on this input. I'm going to change the label to add task. And actually I'm going to change this label to a placeholder. So I'm not keen on it displaying the add task label up there. So I'll just change that to placeholder. Okay, that's better. Okay, so this import already has a V model on it. I'm just going to move that to the top. And this is set to the property text, which doesn't exist. I'm going to set this to new task. And then I'm going to create a data property for that down here in our data. So new task, set that to an empty string. 
Uh, we can check that's working by just sticking some text in here. So, banana poo. Yep, that's working. I'll set that back to an empty string. Now let's create a method for adding a new task. So in our methods object, I'll add a new method called add task. And for now, I'm just going to log out add task. And we want to trigger this whenever this add button is clicked. So I'm going to add a click handler to that button. So at click, we want to trigger add task. And we also want to trigger it when the user hits the enter key when they're in this input. So on this queue input, I'm going to add at key up. And I'm going to add a modifier to that of dot enter. So whenever the enter key is clicked, we also want to trigger this method add task. Let's just make sure that's working. I'm just going to clear my console, click the button. Yeah, we see add task is triggered. Or if I hit the enter key, then add task is also triggered. Okay, so let's update the add task method to actually add a new task to this tasks array, thus updating our view. So we want to push a new object to this tasks array with a property of title and a property of done. So in this add task method, we can just do this.tasks.push. We want to push an object with a title property which we're going to grab from this new task property, which is bound to this input. So set that title to this dot new task. And we'll set the done property to just false by default. Okay, let's see if that's working. Who more bananas? Yeah, that's working. However, this field is not cleared out after we hit enter. So back in our add task method, after we push that task to the array, I'm just going to clear out this input by clearing out this new task property. So we can just do this dot new task equals empty string. Let's try that again. Two more bananas. Yeah, that's working. So I'm just gonna comment out all our dummy data. So everything inside this tasks array, save that. Uh, let's try that again. Get apples, eat apples, poo apples. Great. Okay, there's one more thing I want to do, which is to display a nice message to the user when there are no tasks. So I'm going to stick a div on the page after our queue list. I'm going to give this a class of no tasks so we can style it and a class of absolute center to position it in the center of our page. And I'm going to stick a div with a class of text h5 to give it the styles of a h5 heading and text primary to give it our primary color and text center to make it centered. I'm just going to stick the text no tasks in there. Let's save that. I'd like to have a nice icon above that check icon. So above that div, I'm going to add a Q dash icon. And I'm going to give this a name of check and a size of 100 pixels and a color of primary. Save that. Okay, I'm just going to make this a bit more faint. So in our style section, I'm going to target that no tasks class and just set the opacity to 0.5. Save that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. However, this is going to be displayed all of the time at the moment, even if we have tasks. So I'm going to add a v if directive to that div that we've added. So v dash if not tasks dot length. So in other words, if our tasks array is empty, then display this div. Save that. Okay, now if we add a task, get apples, then we see the no tasks message disappear. And if we delete our task, then we see it reappear again. Okay, so the app is basically done. Let's make sure it's gonna look all right in a mobile browser. So let's add some tasks. Get chicken, eat chicken, poo chicken. Okay, we can add tasks, we can mark them as completed, we can delete tasks, we see the notification, we see the dialogues, and we see our no tasks banner. Um, we can get to our menu, click on the help page and get to that. Let's just make sure our state is preserved if we go to the help page and back again. So I'll just add get chicken 
Now, if we go back to the help page and back to the to-do page, yeah, we still see get chicken there. Right, let's create a Mac version of this app. So if you're developing on a Mac, this is really simple. You just want to jump to the terminal and close the dev process and just run quasar dev dash M for mode electron because quasar desktop apps use the electron framework. And we now have the Mac version of our app and it's popped up with a little inspector. So you can do all the things you would usually do with a web app. And there's tons of things we can do with Electron apps, like we can customize the menu bar, add our own options. We can interact with the user's file system. We can do lots of the things that you can do with a true native Mac app. So let's just check it's working okay. So help page is working. We can get to the to-do page. We can open and close the drawer. See, we can add tasks, get oranges, eat oranges. Um, poo oranges Okay, so we can add tasks we can mark them as done. Can we delete them? See the nice little pop-up uh, We can delete them and we see the little notification as well. Okay, let's create the Windows version Now there is a bit of setup involved if you're doing this on a Mac You need to have a virtual machine installed with something like VirtualBox And I explain how to do all that in my full Quasar course So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Quasar build command to build the Windows app on the Mac and then I'm going to run that on my Windows virtual machine. So I'm just going to close this Mac version. And this has already killed our dev process. And we do need to change a setting first. So we need to go to our config file in the root quasar.conf.js. And I'm just going to search for Electron. Um, we have our Electron settings here. And our packager settings here and these are the settings used by Electron to package our Windows or Mac app. So we need to add an option here which is platform and we want to set that to Win32 so that this builds the Windows version and not the Mac version. So I'm going to save that, jump back to the terminal and I'm going to run Quasar. So for the Mac app we use the Quasar dev command to launch it in development mode but this time we're going to actually build an app so we're going to run Quasar build and then again, dash M for mode electron. Okay, so we have an error here. We have this bundler is not a function error. And I don't know what's causing this. I assume it'll be fixed in future. But a quick Google showed me that I can fix this by just deleting our node modules folder and running npm install again. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to right click on our node modules folder and just delete that. Then I'm just going to run npm install. Okay, that's finished. So now I'm going to try running that build command again. So quasar build dash m electron. Okay, great. It says build succeeded. It says our output folder is in dist electron. So it's created this new folder here, dist. We go in there. We have an electron folder. And then inside that we have this quasar to do win32 x64 folder. And if we go in there, we can see our Windows app. We can see the .exe file there. Quasar has also created this source electron folder where our electron project goes. And if we go in this main process file and open this electron main.js, then we can customize our electron app with settings such as width and height, and also tap into native Mac functionality and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm just gonna to jump to my virtual machine, which is a virtual box virtual machine. And I have my projects folder shared with this virtual machine. So I can see all my projects here. Uh, we want to open up Quasar to do, and then dist, electron, Quasar to do win32 x64. Uh, we can just go ahead and run this exe file. And we now have a Windows version of our app. So let's just check if it's working. See if we can add a task, get eggs, Eat eggs, poo eggs. Yeah, that seems to be working. Um, we can mark them as done. It is a little bit jerky, but that's just because we're in a virtual machine. This will be a lot smoother on a real Windows PC. Um, we can get to the help page. Uh, we can go back. Uh, we can resize the window. And it all looks pretty good. Okay, let's create the Android version. So I'm gonna shut down this virtual machine. And for Android, you do need to have Android Studio installed and an AVD installed. 
So there is a little bit of setup involved, but again, I show you how to do this in my full Quasar course, but I'm just going to jump to Android Studio. And I'm going to go to Configure and AVD Manager, Android Virtual Device Manager. I'm going to launch this Pixel device. Okay, now that our virtual device is loaded, we can launch our app on it in development mode. So I'm just going to jump to the terminal and run Quasar Dev-M for mode. Cordova this time because Quasar apps use the Cordova framework. Dash capital T for target Android. And we now have an Android version of our app. And because we're on mobile, the drawer is hidden by default. Let's see if that's working. Yeah, that's okay. We can get to the different pages. Let's see if we can add a task. Get milk. Drink, milk, and poo, milk. Yeah, so we can add tasks, we can mark them as done, and we can delete them. Pretty goddamn good. So I'm going to close that, and let's create the iOS version. So I'm going to close that dev process, and I'm just going to run Quasar dev m for mode, Cordova dash capital T and this time iOS and you do need to have Xcode installed for this to work and we now have an iOS version of our app which is looking pretty goddamn sexy right so the sidebar is working the draw we can get to the help page get back see if we can add a task get bananas poo bananas Yeah, we can add tasks, we can mark them as done, and we can delete them. The possibilities with Quasar Framework are absolutely insane. I mean, you can create your app once with a single code base and publish it to the web and all these different app stores. You could monetize your app with ads and in-app purchases on all these different platforms. When you need to fix a bug, you just fix it once and redeploy to all the platforms. When you need to add a feature, you just add it once and redeploy again. So for me, as an indie app dev, Quasar is the best thing that's happened with web technologies in a long time. Now, this isn't a real-world app. It doesn't have a back-end. Users can't log in or register doesn't have a settings page or error handling or form validation or anything like that. But if you want to go deep with Quasar, I have a Udemy course in which I teach you how to create real world apps with Quasar, Vue.js, Vuex and Firebase, along with all the things that real apps need, like user authentication, settings pages, form validation, error handling, real time data sync across devices and much more. By the end of this course, you'll be able to take your own idea, create a real world app from it and publish it to the web and all the different app stores. The course is packed with 15 hours of content, assignments to supercharge your learning, and it has over a thousand students who are so happy with the course that it's now the highest rated course on Udemy in the Vue.js category. So if that sounds interesting and you want to check out the first 23 videos for free, click the link at the top of the description.